Welcome to another exciting episode of your program, The Vintage Show with Vivian. I'm your host, Vivian Elabo Fasero. Yes, I am all the way in Ondo State, Akure in Nigeria, the Sunshine State. I am visiting the Ministry of Adult Technical and Vocational Education. And who is the man behind this ministry? Is a man that we have interviewed before. We, but he was in a different capacity. Today, he is the, the commissioner for adult technical and vocational education. No other than Honorable Remy Olatsugura. Please join me as we interview him and find out the challenges, the way forward within this new ministry. Come with me. This is a new ministry that you're handling. What? How did you find the ministry? Let us start with that. It's quite challenging. Uh, this is Ministry of Adult Technical and Professional Education uh, with emphasis on Tibet, technical and vocational education. Uh, we live in a, develop, uh, a developing country or an underdeveloped country. Uh, the biggest challenges that we are having uh, are in the area of uh, technology. And we can never make progress in this part of the world unless and until we are able to get our hands together on technological development. Uh, basically, this ministry is in charge of uh, technical education in all the states and vocational education, of course. And basically, over the years, uh, we, in Nigeria, we have been having consistently capacity gap in craftsmanship and uh, artisanship. And we, in Ondo State, we are also part of this problem. But what is making our own a different uh, situation is that we have deliberately created a ministry here to take charge of technical and vocational education. That's, that's also the uh, reason why it could be said that we have identified the problem and we are already taking proactive uh, solution by focusing on technical and vocational education as a thematic area uh, for the purpose of moving the state forward. Uh, Why was this ministry created? This ministry was created precisely upon the resumption of uh, Dr. Richard Mungo in uh, governance, so he as governor in all those days. Uh, in 2009, that's exactly, that's exactly when it was created. And it was created purposely to allow this ministry to focus on technical and vocational education. Okay. When we're looking at uh, technical and vocational, we're looking at skill acquisition, isn't it? Yes, there's an aspect of vocational uh, education. Skill acquisition is an aspect of vocational, vocational education. education. We have the technical colleges and there are kids that are run from the technical uh, colleges. We have carpentry and joinery, we have welding, we have underwater welding, we have uh, building, on that building, you have making of plaster of Paris, bricklaying, concreting, tiling, etc. And then you have the uh, automotive, uh, uh, autotonic, that's, that has to do with the uh, handling of uh, vehicles, the repair of vehicles, using a modern uh, computerized uh, technique of detection of uh, engineering problems with vehicles. Uh, we have piping and uh, have a, if agricultural trade, we live in the tropical part of the world, uh, and uh, on those things, basically, uh, we have a lot of uh, arable land, like talking about uh, 15,000 uh, square meters that we have here. We are close to 13,000 square meters available for uh, agriculture. Okay. And so, agriculture. Comparative advantage because we have a convergence of the tree, uh, we have a convergence of the uh, vegetation here. You have the mangrove, the rainforest, the savanna, and you have the grassland converging together in the same state. So we can do almost all kind of uh, tropical agriculture in the uh, whole state. So it's an area of comparative advantage. Majority of our rural people in the state are in the agriculture sector. So we have taken 
agreed the techniques as part of the trip that we run in the uh, technical colleges many of comparative uh, advantage. Okay. The beauty of technical and vocational education is hands-on and you have to be in the field. Right. Are you, is your ministry, do you intend to partner or seek partners from outside the state, from you know, private sectors? Yes, definitely, because uh, the best way you can run uh, uh, technical education or TVET generally is to have a liaison between the administration and the industry practitioners. Okay. By industry practitioners, I mean people who are already in the industry, who day to day rely on the skills of those that you train in your technical colleges. Okay. So there must be synergy between what you do in the training of uh, your students yes. and the industry requirement as a skill. So we have uh, in all those states, we have uh, a working relationship with the existing uh, uh, industry practitioners. And as a matter of fact, at present, we are working in conjunction, or the state government is partnering with industry practitioners okay. and some other stakeholders to embark on what we call graduate conversion program, for okay. example. Yeah, we have close to uh, 20,000 registered uh, graduates of polytechnic and universities in this state that are not employed and that, that industries the industries have classified them as not being on not being employed. I think after going to through to um, polytechnics and universities. Yeah that, that uh, the reason being that they have no demonstrable skills Skill. that they, that can make them fit into the available industries. Okay. So we are, what we are doing now is to fill the capacity gap uh, by coming up with a uh, graduate conversion program. And this basically is a uh, a modular uh, conception of certain basic engineering and uh, technical courses to fill the gap of the uh, lack of skill on the, on the side of uh, the graduate. What we mean is by this is that you, put, you, you have to bring the graduates together who are looking for a job and who are being classified as being not being employable, and then you ask from each and every one of them which of these available trades do you want to be trained on. Uh, and these are trades that are also available in the technical colleges, but we call it graduate conversion program because we are going to run it in conjunction with some industry practitioners. And then under the auspices or leadership of the Federal University of Science and Technology, which is also based in Korea here. So the Federal University of Science and Technology will have input into the development of the curriculum, which has already been done. They have input into the content of the curriculum. and. Input into the curriculum delivery by each of those partners that we're going to run the program with. But basically and essentially, this program is to give skills to the otherwise uh, unskilled graduates that are looking for white collar jobs, which unfortunately are not available uh, in government circle or in the banks. So we want to give them business skills in plumbing, in piping, in building, in tiling, in making of plaster of Paris, in automotive engineering services carpentry and journey so that they can run to any of these industries and begin to work with some demonstrable skills. How do you do your selection process? Yes, we intend to... And bearing in mind that you have to refer to as much people. Okay. Our advice is not so much about the, what, the class of degree that you brought out of the university, but the passion to learn some skills. Okay. So How do people go about... We have professionals that would uh, handle that for us. Okay. We have gone to Lagos to understudy what Lagos State has done in okay. this area. And go, Lagos State the experiment in this area has been likely very successful. So, okay. And we are partnering, we, we share uh, information and then we, we, we also do peer review. We have just completed the peer review with Lagos. The Lagos practice of TVET is okay. And we are also uh, working on our own platform here, which is better than what we find in Lagos also. because. We are developing more on whatever Lagos has done, such that in the next few months, Lagos will also come back to the state to learn one or two things. We are working out some partnership, even with some uh, foreign countries, uh, such that we'll be able to inject into the, uh, uh, into the number of the trainers and instructors that we have, some expatriates. Uh, we want to develop our expatriates, I mean, uh, our uh, instructors, trainers in the, in the polytechnic and in the skill application center by means of injection of uh, expatriates from other countries, particularly from Southeast uh, Asia, 
uh, to the midst of our technical instructors so that they can get themselves improved and be able to do peer review with those uh, expatriates that are going to be injected. So this is a system of training, a training by injection of people from more advanced uh, uh, economies with better technical uh, standards uh, rather than asking or moving your own personnel to maybe Malaysia or Philippines for training to bring people from Philippines or Malaysia to bring them to you the inject system. them into the system oh, and then your people will begin to see how they run the machines, how they run the equipment that we have on ground and then begin to learn from them okay. and then they may also make suggestions as to the quality of the equipment that they are using back home in their country and then they give you an idea of how to get them to bring them there, they learn, they teach you also in the process so the practical system of training, training by injection of material from uh, other parts of the world. Oh, okay, if I am a student in all those things and I say to myself, oh, I design history, yeah. what do I do? As a student? As a student or, or as an individual, what can I do? Because if you come here, there must be a process to, to gain admission into your ministry. What is the process like? The process is that we have a website. We have designed a form on the website. We're going to go into, uh, on air, and this is also part of the discuss this discussion, this conversation I'm having with you also, yeah. is part of the public enlargement program that we also intend to go into as a launching, uh, a part of that launching uh, activity on this program. But essentially, we, are, we have a website okay. for this particular ministry. You go into our, you log onto our website, you find our forms there, okay. you feed the uh, form electronically okay. and submit electronically. Okay. We will collect in our office, the deputy officer for the program will be collect there. Okay. But you must basically be a graduate okay. before you can fit into the graduate conversion program. Okay. You must have either HND, BSc or Bachelor of Arts degree from any university, uh, from any part of the world okay. to qualify you. So you fill your form, you submit online, we process there. Yeah? And then we call you for physical interview so that we can psychologically read you and then uh, know whether you have passion for the job or you are just coming because you have no other thing to do. Mm -hmm. We have experts that can look at you. We have clinical psychologists, we have uh, uh, social psychologists. Okay, that is the graduate conversion program. And then again, if you are a student or undergraduate, like you said, you can make up your mind to, uh, to go to any of our existing skill, uh, skill acquisition centers, which is outside of the Related to, but outside of the graduate conversion program, maybe during the holiday, you can approach any of the skilled labor centers, either in Aquaria or Tiruba. Is that being run by the ministry? It's also under the, run by the ministry, okay. the skilled labor center. Okay. Those ones are for non-graduates, anybody who wants to learn skill. But the graduate conversion program is essentially for uh, graduates who have uh, successfully completed their HND and uh, bachelor degree in the university. Is there an age limit here? Okay. Uh, there can't be age limits here. This is Ministry of Adult Technical and Vocational Education. Okay. We will be looking forward to having an 80 year old person who will want, come, who will want to approach us to learn carpentry and then uh, 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 computer crafts. Okay. The age is no barrier here. That's essentially what I'm saying. Okay. You've been in this ministry, say, for a couple of months or about three months now? Four weeks ago. Okay, oh, so you're pretty new. Uh, yes, um, in terms of uh, the number of days I've spent here, yeah, new, but in terms of the content of the, for the volume of literature that I've gone through here, yeah, and the travel I've made about this place, trying to get things together, I'm quite good. In okay. terms of the volume of the literature I've read, okay. in terms of the area I've visited, in terms of the information I've done, yeah, I would say I'm quite good with this job. Um, in terms of the number of days I've spent here as a, a commissioner, uh, it's just four weeks. How do you intend to revitalize the ministry? Because you must have found the ministry in a state that every, every, every commissioner comes with their own agenda. Right. So what are the challenges you found on the ground? The challenges I found on the ground basically are okay. when I got to this place, the facilities there were not good enough. Okay. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, okay, so that's the starting point. The starting point. I also need to put my own office in good order. Okay. I moved in. And then of course I did some renovation. You can see that my office is looking mm. very nice and corporate like any office in any of the high street in England. Mm. Um, I put all the equipment here. Uh, 
people that are able to have access on the internet to get my paper printed on my laptop and my printer and then get myself linked to the rest of the world and be able to connect with some of my friends who are in other states of the Federation. Yesterday here I connected with an institution in the Philippines, we exchange paper, we exchange ideas, we exchange interaction on the uh, on the net and then we are also working with some of our colleagues in uh, in Senegal and Mali. We were able to do all of those things electronically because we were also going to Senegal and Mali for peer review. So, we so this, put, this ministry needs to be open and running. We need there to put all of this in place. And then when we, so we have done all of those uh, things, you see the environment of the ministry, but to weed off the shrubs and then planted the grass everywhere and flower. So that, because one of the trees that will be learned here uh, by uh, applicants will be landscaping. Okay. So if you want to teach somebody on landscaping, you must soon be found in a very dirty environment okay. so that we, we grasp the entire place and then uh, plant from flowers. Uh, keep our lawn in very good order so that whoever is coming here and want to teach their fellow on what they call landscaping, he will know that you have a background with which to do that uh, sort of training. Okay. So this is basically what we are, we are challenging the fan on ground here in the headquarters. We are um, able to address them substantially, okay. but still work in progress though. And in the technical colleges also, we already moving in work in progress also in terms of uh, redecoration, renovation, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and re-engineering of all the processes, including personnel also. Uh, like I said earlier, we are in the personnel uh, trying to push the capacity gap that we have even the personnel in our technical schools uh, as one of the solutions that we have devised also is this process, process of injection of the substrate into their, uh, into, into, into their number such that they can they, they can bring their own idea from all over the world and inject into the, in our system such that our own personnel here will be able to have the opportunity of reviewing whatever they know about the uh, particular trade with their colleagues from another part of the world. And we are doing all of this in the process of uh, uh, allowing our officers and men and instructors and trainers to have uh, what the, the uh, publicists would call a cross fertilization of ideas. Okay. Hello and welcome back to the Vintage Show with Vivian. Still with me is Honorable Remy Olatsubora. He is the um, new commissioner for adult education, technical and vocational. You're welcome back to the program, sir. Um, before we went on break, we wanted to know if you had a time scale that you intend to work with. Yeah. This uh, document from industry uh, practitioners that we already have in a partnership with, okay. we've asked them to do the teacher for us, the pass for us. Okay on how to, they have gone around all our existing facilities and technical okay. colleges and they are like consulting for us okay. on what to do and how to uh, address uh, the problems of each and every of our departments. Uh, we are working with the uh, Engineering Material Development uh, Institute, it's a federal government agency. We are also working with the uh, Federal University of uh, Science and Technology in Akure. Okay. We have some other industries like Denki Wire and Cable, uh, uh, Wire and Cable Manufacturing, Company, one of the best in the West Coast of Africa, is there in Akure. We are also partnering with them. We are partnering with a Catholic uh, technical college, uh, Don Bosco mm -hmm. Technical College, run by the Catholic Mission in Nigeria. Uh, we also are working with some other industry practitioners mm -hmm. in the development of uh, curriculum for our technical and vocational education mm -hmm. in the state, particularly in the area of the graduate conversion program. So are you doing any work with uh, MDGS? MDGS, yes, we yeah. must, we, we proposing to work with MDGS, okay. uh, but we must get all our data correctly okay. and then our program of action set. Okay. And that's exactly why we are bringing in all of this literature from industry practitioners. We have done, uh, we have written out a work plan on the basis of the suggestions contained and, uh, in this particular literature that we are having before us. And the conferences that we have had with all the industry uh, practitioners that we are having, that we are presently partnering with. So we have designed a work plan. I will begin to roll the work plan in the next uh, three weeks. Okay. Okay. Um, and the work plan basically will be to reinvigorate, re-engineer, 
rehabilitate technical and vocational education. Reinvigorate, rehabilitate, re engineer, and reconstruct okay. technical and vocational education in all those states. Okay. Um, people out there, how can I get across to you? Or somebody's watching it on the YouTube and say, oh wow. Ondo State is open for development. This sounds interesting. I want to be part of it. How can I be part of it? Or well, is there any room for that? Just log on to www.ondostatematv. Okay. Matv. 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 Dot okay. Org. Okay. Or you can just straight away Google Ministry of Adult and Technical Education in Ondo State, Nigeria. The links will come up. So if only they are trying to partner with you. Of course, the only information that they will require okay. will be found in our website. Okay. Right. They, or they can also for those who have visited Nigeria before can also reach us uh, physically here. We we'll to have a discussion on areas where they can partner with us. But basically, we need the technical knowledge, technical uh, personnel. That can assist us to reinvigorate uh, our uh, technical schools. Uh, because I must admit to you that uh, we have the problem of capacity gap okay. in terms of the, the uh, personnel and instructors okay. and trainers in our technical schools. Okay. So, how about volunteers? If somebody wants to volunteer their time? We, we, okay. we, if you can volunteer your time okay. to be here and then assist us to train all of these individuals, it will be adding value to. What we have on ground in all the yeah, because the biggest problem that we have in this country today is the problem of unemployment. Close to over 30 percent of the population of this country are unemployed, and among all these unemployed people, close to 90 percent of them are probably graduates of university and polytechnic. So that, that needs to be retrained back into the to be the the some basic skills. Uh, so that they can also be relevant in the industry. So uh, these are challenges that we are having before us in our hands, and we need experts. We need people who have the technical know-how, or who can also train uh, to come to our assistance. It's not enough that you have it, uh, structures and equipment. Yeah. You want to have personnel yeah. that will be ready to uh, that has the capacity and the capability to train. Uh, because you see. Essentially, the reason why it is important for anybody, uh, majority of our people here, yeah, to have business skill is that self employment is about the best thing that can happen to anyone. Yeah. I left the university uh, close to 23 years ago. I've always been self employed. And I've got half skill. I'm a lawyer. I work in my chambers and I've employed other lawyers working with me. So I have a lot of liberty. I choose to, I choose to be in my office by 5 a.m. in the morning. My secretary will be there. If my secretary is not there, I will use my own spell of my key to open the place. I can choose to work in my office till 1 a.m. or 12 midnight. Nobody is going to say, okay, the office hour is ending as soon as soon as soon time. We have to block this place. You no, know, we have a lot of liberty. We have a lot of you know flexibility. To do what you to, to do what have you have a passion do. for. And then of course you also must know that the world does not owe you a living. Yeah. If you want to if you want to eat, if you want to pay your bills, if you want to pay the children's school fees, you must earn enough income in your office. And so not in, everything must be to results. You must work to target results. Uh, very unlike what you have in public service, uh, where anybody will just do whatever he likes. If you are self-employed, you know that the world does not owe you a living. The result of what you are going to get is will be dependent on the effort that you are putting into it. So it is a result of the private sector is result oriented. And that's the kind of background that some of us have. And that is the spirit with which we also are working at the, in the uh, public offices that we have had the opportunity of occupying in the last uh, uh, 15 to 17 years that we have been part of the political process in Nigeria, particularly in the United States. Oh, fantastic. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. You always give us something to think about. Right. So thank you so much for having us at such a short time in your office. And we hope that the next time we come, we'll get something bigger and something fresh Let me in your capacity, yeah. in your ministry. Yes, um, in the next two years, you might probably need to bring people from the UK to come and learn how to 
restart a process that is almost gone comatose. That people will have to learn on how to fast track the processes of. Uh, Let me come and learn the cassava bread. How to make the cassava, cassava bread? bread. <laughs> yes, we, we, that will be part of the. That's also part of uh, the areas we are looking into. We are looking at the post harvest uh, challenges that we are having in the agricultural sector and what to address them. What you are talking about. Cassava processing, uh, yes. cassava bread, it is part of post harvesting uh, or post harvest strategy that we are also bring into our agricultural sector. Because sometimes it's enough for me to do agriculture, produce goods, uh, produce uh, yam tubers, produce cassava. We must also prepare for post harvest challenges, processing, mm. and then you know, even marketing and distribution. It's also in the areas that we are looking to in our uh, craftsmanship. Uh, an artisanship uh, development venture in my uh, own industry using the platform of the Ministry of uh, Adult Technical and Vocational Education. Last word for our audience. What will be your last word? I'm challenging all of you Nigerians in the diaspora come back to Ugo State to be part of the process of reinvigoration, reengineering, reconstruction, and rehabilitation of technical and vocational education. Well, those of you who are still at home, who are running around the streets, who are graduates of the universities looking for jobs to do, come now to our graduate conversion program, be part of the process. Let us train you here for one year so that you can become independent and self employed. Thank you very much, sir. I hope you've been inspired, I hope you've been informed, and I hope you've also been entertained. On those states is a land of opportunity. As they say, is the Sunshine State. Please do feel free if you want to be part of this new initiative. Um, do feel free to visit www.ondomatve.org if you have skills or if you just want to be, if you want to support the initiative. I hope you've been inspired. Until next time, when I bring you another exciting guest, do stay blessed and remember those who dare to dream, dare to achieve. God bless you.